Hi guys, I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite plants. So this plant has been one of my comeback stories, really. I had such a struggle in the beginning with this plant that I just like, I would not give up. I would just keep trying and trying and trying until I pretty much like kind of figured out a care routine and really figured out the plant because it took a little while for me to kind of get to know the plant, kind of really just know what it needs and what it wants and all that stuff. And the plant that I'm talking about is the Ravnopora tetrasperma. So you have may seen a while back that I did a video on basically how I combated root rot, how I treat root rot, and how to really prevent it. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it above so you guys can check that out. But that was the plant that I showcased in that entire video because that was the plant that constantly, constantly got root rot. And that's one of, one of the biggest issues with this plant is root rot. So when it comes to watering, you have to be really careful. There are certain care routines are very similar to the Monstera Deliciosa. This plant is also nicknamed the Mini Monstera. And I think it gets that nickname because it's so similar care wise to the Deliciosa, but also it kind of looks like a Monstera. But a Arapifora is actually a completely different species of plant and there's different varieties. But today we're just gonna focus on the Tetrasperma because that's a plant that has really like overcome a lot and I've had it in my care for quite a while now. So I am comfortable telling you guys like my care tips and basically what I do to keep these plants alive and happy. Let's dive into the plant care, but before we get into that, please like this video at the end of the video if you love this kind of content, and also please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed already. All right, now with further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to highlight is lighting. So when it comes to lighting for the tetrasperma, you're gonna to wanna to put the plant into a medium bright light setting. You don't want the plant to get any really direct sun rays. The plant's leaves are very sensitive to direct sun and will cause the plant to burn. So you have to make sure that you keep it away from the sun, but also in a bright area. So even if you keep it behind, like if you have like a sunny window and you keep it behind like a sheer curtain, that's really great. Or you can also keep it on the side of a window. I used to keep my tetrasperma on the side of a southeast facing window. It wouldn't get any kind of direct rays, but it got really great bright morning, like early morning to like early afternoon sun and then like mid afternoon it kind of fizzled off a little bit but this plant has just like been growing like crazy to the point where i actually had to move it from my southeast facing window to over here which is actually i'm actually facing my southeast facing window it used to sit in so it's actually about 10 to 15 feet away from the southeast facing window like in the morning it like the sun comes through that window and just covers my entire like plant shelf. Even though my grow lights are already on, they're getting like double light and my plants have been completely fine with that. <laughs> but it still gets like kind of like those like dappled sun rays through the window. So it's still gonna be okay if the sun rays hit that because it's so far away that it's not gonna affect the plant. It does still get a little amount of sun and I'm assuming it probably gets a little bit of light from the grow lights that are right next to it, but probably not too, too much. I have another propagation Raphidophora in my office slash bedroom <laughs> and that also is in a southeast window but it is next to the window so it sits on my desk and it gets like kind of like dappled morning to mid-afternoon light just like this one used to but it isn't as big so i can keep it on my desk for quite a while it's also going to be a little experiment but I'll get into that in just a minute. When it comes to watering your tetrasperma, I would say to kind of be cautious. Now I say that because I had just explained that it is 
susceptible to root rot. At least in my experience, this plant has root rotted more times than any other plant that I have in my collection. So I am very careful and very cautious when I water these plants. I make sure that the soil is actually a really well draining soil. Lots of perlite, lots of charcoal, and lots of bark. So I do like a orchid bark and I really just water it really, really good when the soil's mostly dry. I usually wait until the moisture meter reads about three or if it the soil just seems very dry. It can withstand a little bit of drought, which is kind of a nice thing for me. I check it every week, but I don't water it every week. I probably water this if I have to put a number on it. I probably water it about every two to three weeks. It doesn't really get a ton of water now, especially since it's on the other side of my room. It's not getting a ton of light. It's not drying out the soil as much. So I'm actually finding that I need to water it even less. Fast draining soils are going to be your best friend with this plant because it is susceptible to root rot. So you don't want that water to sit in the soil. You don't want it, the roots to be submerged under that water and get kind of gross. When I'm watering this plant, I always make sure that I give it a good water and I make sure that that water's pouring out within seconds. So I just, I'm just cautious when I water. Humidity for the Raphidophora tetrasperma is like, I mean, I have found that it's, it does okay in normal house humidity. Although I have to make a disclaimer, my house usually is around like 40 to 50% humidity. Because I live in Florida, it's like you can't really help it. So I know that's not normal like house humidity. Usually it's like 30 to 40. So mine's just a little bit higher than like a common like normal house. I find that it does fine. Yeah, it doesn't really need to be near hum humidifier. It does okay. I mean, if you have a Monster Del Deliciosa in your care and it is doing great, this plant is going to be just as easy. Just be careful with watering <laughs> because like I said, and I will keep saying it, it is very sensitive to watering, just in my opinion. When it comes to fertilizing, in the spring, summer, and even the fall months. So the growing season for this is just a little bit longer. So from the spring to the fall, you can fertilize this plant every two to four weeks. The plant will be growing rapidly. My plant, I haven't fertilized this plant, or at least this guy in like, I have to say probably a month, month and a half. And I'm still getting lots and lots of growth. That's a great, <laughs> That's a great sign for that plant, that it's happy where it is. In the spring and summer, you'll notice a burst of growth. At least I did when I had it near that window. It was just growing so rapidly and so crazy that, like I said, I had to move it over because it was growing up too high and it was hitting like my hanging planters. And it was just like, I don't really love like my plants to really touch because of like pests and all that stuff. So I decided to just move it over. Plus it's like such a nice little like stable, like a, like a staple piece or st statement piece. It's a nice little statement piece right next to my plant shelf. And eventually hopefully it grows up on my state botanical sign, which would be kind of cute. That's also another point. So these plants are climbers. They will climb on anything. So I actually don't have a moss pole for this or a stick. It's actually supported by hooks that I have on the wall. Um, what it is, is these like plastic hooks and you have these two little balls at the end and you can just snap the, basically just kind of like snap it together to keep it secure. That helps the plant kind of climb up. I have noticed that some of the aerial roots are starting to get a little bit longer. So that might be, you know, something that I have to assess 
later on in the future because basically what they'll do is they'll just continue to keep growing until they reach like something that they want to attach to which they can't attach to my drywall but uh, if you have like a moss pole or anything like that they're great with moss poles those aerial roots will climb right in there and the plant will be super happy i have noticed that i've seen every once in a while uh when i'm looking at pictures of these plants because I had to admit it, I will look up pictures of these plants quite often because they're just so beautiful. But, but um, I have noticed that some people let theirs trail. And you know that I am just a trailing plant fanatic. So I wanted a trailing version of this plant, but this plant was just so, so far gone and so far like climbing up the wall that I was like, we'll just let him do its thing. And I have a cutting of a baby version right here. So this is my little propagation that I've got going on right now. But this plant eventually, I want to trail. I'm gonna try and experiment and see what happens. I know that if a climbing plant trails, it tends to produce smaller growth. I love to experiment with my plants so we're gonna kind of see but this kind of brings me into my next point so propagation propagating these plants are the easiest honestly they're just as easy as like a pothos or anything like that so i've had this guy propagating for a little while and we have some beautiful roots growing in there you guys can see all that. So I really, really make sure that I root these really well. I'll actually, probably in the next couple of days, I'm gonna transplant this into moss. So that's kind of like my, just like a side note for like my propagations. I'll water propagate them just to get the roots going and then I'll put them in moss to get them kind of, it's like that in-between stage between like water and soil so i'll put them in moss to let them get used to the moss let them grow some good moss roots and then i'll put them in the soil i like that in between stage with the moss or you can just straight up just propagate them in moss that's totally fine too or just propagate them in water and put them into soil i've had that work as well but because the roots are just so sensitive in my experience i like to do that in between stage just to make sure that they root really well and they're ready for soil. This is just like one of those cuttings that I've had for a little while propagating. And like I said, I'm gonna eventually put this in moss. That one behind me, this one is actually a separate plant. So that is the one that I showcased in my video that I kept root rotting. And uh, I root rotted again, so that's why it's propagating again. So um, yeah, so that's that one. This one I got in March for my birthday. So this one has been growing like crazy. I'm telling you right now, this is like four feet tall. Like it's it's really tall. It, and it's just gonna continue to keep growing and growing and growing. So just make sure that you have a good amount of space in your home that's gonna allow it to grow and get high up and just keep growing. It can get bushy if you keep like cutting and propagating it, but most of the time people just kind of do what I do and they just kind of like secure it to the wall, which is totally fine and it will be totally happy with that as well. So that is it. So those are just like a few of my care tips that I wanted to share with you guys and let you guys know like what I do to keep my rapid forward tetrasperma happy and healthy in my care and also a little update so you guys can kind of see that I've changed my ways and I am not like I used to be and I, uh, I'm able to uh, now have a plant, have one of those plants and not root rot it. At least let me find wood and knock on it somewhere because maybe I will after this video, who knows. <laughs> but for now it is doing great. I am just really happy and excited and I just wanted to share that all with you guys. But let me know in the comments if you have one of these plants and you have had struggles with it or it's just growing like crazy and it's beautiful and stuff. I wanna know, let me know in the comments and 
that's it. So I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.